What is up, everybody? It is a beautiful sunny day here today for the third race of the National Rock Racing Association. Presented by Mickey Thompson. Again, we are at Hot Springs, Arkansas. This race will be presented by Spider Off-Road. I was looking at your pointing there. <laughs> Spider Off-Road. <laughs> I love that shot. I love that shot. Again, you can see all the, the uh, tree cover there that's uh, giving a beautiful shaded area to all of our racers. It looks like we're at an amusement park. It does. I was, an off-road amusement yes, park. Yes, it does. And again, I, I'm sure we'll see some very amusing runs today, Bree. <laughs> <laughs> so. Hey, anything can happen on race day. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Hillside Live. Thanks for coming to hang out with Matt and I. Like Matt said, we're here at Hot Springs Off-Road Park in Arkansas for round three already of the Mickey Thompson NRA presented by Spider Off-Road. Yeah, it's going to be a great day. We're very excited to be here. Uh, we have some awesome driver's lists. We have tons of racing action going on today. It's going to be an awesome, awesome day of racing. I, I love the weather here. You know, it's not cold. It's not rainy. We've been blessed now. Two days, two two races in a row with just wonderful weather. The first one was a little mucky. Uh, a little. Well, that's wind rock and mark yeah, for you. It really is. Again, uh, luckily our April showers have held off for now. Our next race will be May, so I'm sure we'll have lots of wonderful flowers. Again, we have tons of side-by-side -side <laughs> rakes in action going today, as well as our VIN class. I met, got to talk to some of our VIN drivers. Uh, some of our drivers have been doing some upgrades, so I'm excited to see our VIN class up here. Definitely got uh, tons of race in action going on. Again, we can see some of the uh, spectator area getting set up over there. I see lots of side-by-sides and Jeeps pulling in. Uh, tons of Jeep, Jeeps and uh, side-by-sides packing in, in our driver area again. Today is Friday, so we have uh, several VIN classes, or the VIN class and several UTV classes, as well as tomorrow will be bouncers and our youth class, which and we I, love so I much. I know our spectators are loving this weather oh, yeah. as well. Nobody likes having to sit out when your your raincoat <laughs> and the easy up huddle away from the yes. mud and water. So yes. loving the weather here this weekend. Um, as always, we love to know where you guys are joining us from. I see Bryant saying what's up. We've got Scott, Barbara, oh Ronnie from Super Grip in there. Where is everybody watching from today? I love when the other countries tune in. It's always super awesome to see. Uh, just, just again, so neat, and we appreciate that when all of our, uh, all of our different continents tune in to watch us. It's always awesome to see. Yeah, at uh, Wildcat just a couple weeks ago, we actually had a group from Israel. Yes. Come all the way, and um, one of them is even such a Bobby Tanner fan that he has built his own replica of Screaming Blue. Yeah. So they got to he be here and watch the racing in person at Wildcat last weekend all the way from Israel. So that's, that was really cool. That's tuning in, like, live, live. Like, actual live. That's as like live <laughs> as it gets. Real it's life live. Speaking of live, there is our uh, part of our pit area. You guys can see down there. We've got all of our drivers lined up, and a few of them are uh, taking a last look at the hill. We are going to be starting with our Rock Life Off-Road UTV stock class today. And then we'll be going into our VIN class and then our Super Grip UTV Cup class. We'll do round one for everybody, and then we'll be back for round two, as always. Mr. Brian Dunnigan, what's up? Bryant says, rumor is that Matt is going to be on out the top soon. That's the rumor has it. Oh, uh -huh. <laughs> maybe we will learn some yes. super secret special fun facts. Yes, yes. Again, hopefully uh, we'll, we'll do some cool stuff. We're going to do that at the uh, at the Rush Off Road Park, May 4th, which will be my birthday. <gasps> so May 4th? May 4th. It's a Star Wars birthday. It is, and it's so exciting because I'm a Star Wars fan, so it works out really, really well. May the 4th be with you, Matt. So. Well, that'll be our next race at Rush coming up. That'll be the fourth race in the National Rock Racing Association. So, super excited a lot for of that. Fours in there. There is. <laughs> yes, May fourth. <4th laughs> Maybe that's for our one way we race. can all remember it. Yes. We've got Matthew from Sorel, Quebec. That's awesome. Tuning in, Matthew. Est-ce que tu parles français? What? Since you're from Quebec. Uh, Tasha from Paris, Texas. Oh, and we are ready to kick things off. Levi Johnson is starting off our day of racing here at Hot Springs Off-Road Park. This is Levi's first race ever. Wow. Coming out here to join in the fun with us. Glad to have him here. We have at least one other driver today. It's also their first race. So we love having some new names on the list, new faces in the driver's meeting, and uh, everybody being able to 
you know, go from watching the videos on YouTube yes. or whatever and then be able to come out here and do it themselves in person. And that's one of the things I think I hear the most from drivers when I go to, we take the bouncer to a car show. I'm sure you guys hear it with the Avenger a lot. You take it to an off-road show or a just an off-road event, even just taking out wheeling. These are so neat. I see them on YouTube all the time, so it's so cool to see one in person. So it's a great to see new drivers come out. And again, even if you can't race the whole season, just coming out and racing one race with us is always so fun to see, and we appreciate that. I love seeing drivers when it's their first time, and I usually go talk to them afterwards and kind of get a take, like, what did you like? What did you think was, you know, what was more what you thought it would be and what was completely How different than you thought it would be? How did this live up to your expectation? Yes. <laughs> that, oh, that, yeah, great. Uh, again, a perfect example, you know, just – how did this live up to what you thought it would be, what what was different than you thought it would be, you know, and kind of get their take. And, uh, again, that's always super neat to to get a first time, uh, somebody, whether it be a spectator or a racer. Again, looks like in that tabletop there, that race line well, tabletop. Levi put down a great smooth first run in that good-looking Can-Am. With an 81175 that was our first driver of the day in his first race ever, Levi Johnson. We can't cheat in here, Zach's announcing now. His uh, his mics are moved over to the crowd side. They have a separate generator for him. He's running over to the crowd, which is actually great because they can hear the crowd side a lot better. Yeah, Jack found the uh, the sweet spot for setting up the he did. speakers. He did a great job. This time around. Making sure the spectators can hear everything, yes. and Matt yes. and I don't have to yes. hear. Yes, his honoriness. I still feel like we'll get we'll get it by like you know osmosis, there's just a, being. There's near no him. escaping it. Let's be real. Yeah, there's no true escaping it. What's up, Greg? Don Curtis on the line now. Don uh, first started racing with us and is still racing with us in the Vin class, and he. Uh, made the step over to our Rock Life UTV stock class this season. So you'll see him racing also in the VIN class in just a little while. Yeah. Again, he did some motor uh, motor stuff to his uh, big block Chevy. They uh, have almost a completely new rotating assembly in that thing. We're talking about how they did some made some changes with lifters and New new cam and uh, made quite a few changes this offseason, so it's exciting to hear. I talked to him this morning about what they were doing. Always fun catching up with the Curtis family. Yes, and they're just so nice. I mean, let's be real. Pretty much everybody out here it, it is. is nice. We do love our off-road family, our race family, as we call them sometimes. We're even going to have a taco bar tonight. What? At the Hoback. Oh, my goodness. All I heard is brownies this morning. Matt, okay? I brought brownies. That's all I heard is brownies. Matt's, like, getting, Matt's excited. It is. Me and Taylor will have to fist fight later for him. <laughs> <laughs> nice run from Don. 70.871 from Mr. Don Curtis. Taylor said I'll lose in the fist fight. Oh, wow. That's low blow. That's a low blow. It hit me right in the leg. Yeah, right. There. Not so much. Not so much here. Here, right here. <laughs> okay, Richard. Yeah, for those Tommy Boy fans out there. Again, that was Don Curtis that just pulled into the finish line. Again, he started out in our VIN class and now races VIN class and UTV. Again, I, th I think they started racing UTV because they're like, "Hey, we have one here. We might as well race it too." You know. Uh, we also talked to them this morning. Uh, I was just saying, you know, you guys do a great job with the VIN class. It'd be just really awesome to see you in a bouncer. And he said. Don't tell my wife we're trying to find the chassis. <laughs> I was like, all Hopefully right. Hopefully she doesn't watch the yeah, live feed. Yes, yes. And he said, we're, you know, if we could. I we're said, spilling it, secrets. You just get, you, you know, do you get the, the vi you can use your, your truck and just get all the bouncer parts put on the truck. And then once they have all the bouncer parts for the truck, you just put them on a chassis. Boom, presto. Now you're racing bouncer just class. the slow, sneaky collection. It, it is. It is. Looks like Alston Tidwell on the line now. If you guys are just joining us, welcome to Hillside Live for the Mickey Thompson National Rock Racing Association race number three already for the season. This weekend presented by Spider Off-Road, and we are at Hot Springs Off-Road Park in Arkansas enjoying a beautiful sunny spring day. We are loving the weather right now. We are. This is our third driver, Austin Tidwell, on the line now. 
So we are just getting going for the weekend. This is our Rock Life Off-Road UTV Stock Class. We will then have the VIN Class and then our Super Grip UTV Cup Class. As always, friendly reminder that Matt and I are watching the show on the Rock Racing TV Facebook page. So if you want us to be able to see your comments and answer your questions, you also should come to the Rock yes. Racing TV Facebook page. We do put it out to lots of different um, sources, so you guys have some options. But if, once again, if you want us to be able to see and inter interact with you and your comments, y'all make sure you're coming on over to the Rock Racing TV Facebook page. Uh, if you're a YouTube person, we also have the Rock Racing TV YouTube yeah. channel uh, as an option for you as well. Austin Tidwell on the course. And I know a lot of people have that YouTube app on their smartphone or smart TV, so you can just pop it up on the TV, sit back in your recliner, watch. Uh, or if you're at work, you can pull up work. They work YouTube page. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> for all of our people that are still having to clock in and clock out on their Friday afternoon. I mean, a work computer probably allows YouTube, you know. So. We won't tell. Put some earbuds in, nobody will know, you know. Now's a good time to also point out that the hills out here, as always, are much steeper in person than they appear on camera. This is like, it would be difficult to walk up the hills. You're going to be leaning forward. You're going to be, you're going to be clawing your way up a little bit. So keep that in mind as you guys watch here. I know these guys make it look easy. We got to tell them to quit doing that. Yeah, they do. <laughs> we, have, we have some guys that definitely make this look very easy. You can see some of these cutouts on the hill. There's like an access road that runs about halfway up of it, and then they have several cutouts that they make with the course. That way it gets a little harder for drivers as well as we have a kind of a double jump right there. You can see him coming over. Uh, as well as a tabletop right there he's clearing. And, again, that's we'll see. I think we'll see a few guys hit that a little harder. Uh, jumping through the finish line. That's an 81. 81.276 for Alston Tidwell. All right, we've got Coy Chapel on the line now. Those iconic neon rims. All the neon out here. Yes. We do have a lot of neon. We Nobody's really trying to sneak around in the woods here. <laughs> make sure not. you can see your rig. Yeah. Just wait till Dylan Dollar gets out I there. I know. We were, <laughs> we were looking at his rig this morning, and I was like, that's just insane. This is Coy Chapel, and we are not quite halfway through round one for the Rock Life Off-Road UTV Stock Class. For those of you just tuning in with us. Don Curtis, and we were sitting up there next to the rigs this morning, the side-by-sides, and he's like, yeah, I ordered a new pair of uh, shoes, and he's like, they came in with Dylan Dowler orange, not Nathan King orange. Oh. Goes, I thought they'd be Nathan King orange, and I was like, okay. And <laughs> there are two very different oranges yeah, there. That's a thing. It's a thing. So... Uh, Definitely have some very bright rigs. I said, oh, here we go. Talking about hitting that double jump. Coy out there just sending it. Coming through the finish line. Six zero point eight seven five. I believe that eight, is our new leader. Eight zero five. Oh. Yeah, that's definitely our new leader. A great run from Coy Chapel. Again, absolutely sent it. You, you can see he kind of, rather than creep over those two double jumps, he just hit it, launched over. And a couple guys this morning at the driver's meeting were talking about who was going to absolutely send it over those double jumps versus who's going to take their time. Taking your time, you don't have to worry about breakage. But sending it, you save some of that time. So uh, we'll, see, uh, we'll so, see how it plays out. So are you saying it's the difference between a moderate send and a full send? It, it really is. It really <laughs> is. Brandon Davis now on the line. <laughs> Oh, making some popcorn in that can am. Uh, again, Brandon Davis, this is a new chassis he just put on uh, right before our last race at Wildcat. He uh, he came and talked to us a little bit on the live feed and said that, yeah, he said the old one was just taking so much of a beating. He was 
we didn't know this because we always made fun of this poor little Can-Am, but he, he was literally getting welded back together after every I'm race. I'm not surprised. It was the little, ooh, little Can-Am that could. Now it really it's was. the little Can-Am that will. Yes. The little Can-Am that can. Yes, yes. And, again, uh, you know, putting it back together, he said, took a while. And uh, since he tore down uh, the IFS buggy, the IFS bouncer, on the off season, he didn't have time, so he put a new chassis under it. And he said it was really getting just to where he said, I said, you notice that much of a performance difference? He said, oh, it got the old chassis got to where it wouldn't turn left. <laughs> He's like, so just being able to turn is night and so day difference. Yeah, so, I'd say that's a difference for sure. Yeah, big, big difference. Brandon is flying around this Hit, course. Hitting those jumps. Oh, ho Wow. 61.114 right behind Coy Chapel that had a, a 60. Some smoking times from these guys. And then it looks like Don Curtis with a 70 would be our third place time currently. Look like Adam Coots on the line now. Miss, Mr. Shake and Bake. He's running a Can-Am. But Paul Wolf helped him put this Can-Am together. He's going to do some Ultra 4 racing with him. So him and Paul put together more of a, an endurance-style Can-Am. And, uh, and we're, we're definitely seeing more Can-Ams yeah. out here. Each season, it seems like, yeah. you know, we've seen it uh, over the last few years. A little, a little wider, a little longer. Again, kind of you can see the kind of that layout kind of helps when you're hitting some of those jumps. You've got to be able to push a little faster. The woods courses are really tight woods courses. You can definitely They're see not those. quite as nimble. Yeah, you can definitely those. see where the uh, a real small, tight razor will definitely be able to whip through a little faster. So, uh, again, it kind of depends on the terrain if, if they can really push hard or not. So uh, you can see some of the really tight woods courses. Some of those real small uh, razors have a little bit more of an advantage. But yeah, definitely you, plays out. There's, some, you know? there's definitely some pros and cons to yeah. both vehicles and styles you know what though i am always amazed at what utvs are capable of these days and the beating that they can take it, it really is the power to weight ratio on these things is just insane oh. Six two point zero one seven. i think that's good enough for third place right now Adam came up to me at the driver's <laughs> meeting. He said, I'm not going to lose my key this time. <laughs> and he, rem he reminded me then of, uh, was it last year or the year before? His key fell out on, like, oh, I don't know, man. second or third round <laughs> hill. He'd been doing great. So that man. is that was one downside to the can yeah. ams <laughs> Yeah. yeah I remember um, – Paul Wolf losing his key at a creek I, yes, one time, Yes, at too. a creek. Yeah, I remember. I was like, duct tape that thing in there. Yes, Make I'd put sure a zip tie or out. something, yeah. I do remember that, losing in a creek, and they were looking. Yep, was, everybody looking for yeah. the key. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's kind of a disadvantage. What's up, Kenneth Cozine? Christy Wills? Braden Upchurch on the course. Emma Bentley? What's up, everybody tuning in? So, currently in points for the Rock Life Off-Road UTV stock class, Braden and Dylan Dowler are tied with 164 points each coming into this weekend. For uh, That would be third, thir third and fourth place that those guys are tied with 164 points right now. Brandon Davis is sitting in the lead points-wise with 193, and then Cody Kaysen is second in points with 190. Those are for the, our two races that we've had so far this season. Got a lot of racing left to do for the 2024 season. We'll see how these points shake out for everybody. What's up, Tasha? Tasha tuning in from Paris, Texas. Got Kylie King watching. And Kenneth Cozine. Kenneth Cozine, one of our season drivers but previously. <coughs> I heard he's got some stuff in the works. He's uh, got some stuff going on. I'm excited to see him. He, he's a heck of a racer. And a super nice guy as well. Wow. Ooh. 67.870 for Braden Upchurch. Again, Braden coming through that finish line absolutely just spicy. <coughs> that means Coy Chapel is still in the lead with a 60.8, followed by Brandon Davis with a 61 and Adam Coots with a 62. Who is this out there now? I missed him go. Jay Stortz.
Jay had broken some stuff on his rig. Uh, got it. Got it all put back together. So he did some did some repairs in the last week and a half. It's it's funny how when you when you're racing those back to back weeks, how much how much turnaround time you really do have because by the time you get home, getting it loaded, it's Sunday, maybe Monday, getting washed, clean, getting the shop, start tearing it apart. You literally have 24 to 48 hours to order parts, get it put back together, get it put back in the trailer, get it ready to go. So that that really quick that really quick turnaround time is absolutely heck on Trevor. And again, most of our manufacturers that deal with the rock bouncers, we're very thankful for. Most of those guys understand our super tight turnaround time, so most of them are super, uh, super great to have something on the shelf or get you know get stuff turned around and get it shipped out to us pretty quickly. So we thank all of our manufacturers that deal with the rock bouncers as well as our side-by-sides that take care of us. I see that new holdback sticker on there, that holdback racing. You eyeballing a piece? I did. Oh, Jay. Woo-hoo-hoo. Way to ride it out. <laughs> Seven two point. Seven two four point two, two eight, eight five. five. For Jay Stewart. He came in hot and steamy as well. Again, a lot of guys j- jumping that finish line. There's a little bit of an undercut on that dirt section there. I see another black can am on the line. Yeah, Daniel, Daniel Heckley sitting in that race line starting gate. <laughs> Jack Porter is literally jumping behind it as soon as he tells him to go. So he Shout out to Jack Porter. Yes. For helping out on the starting line and also Justin Hoback, he helps as well. It's not an easy job. Dodging rocks. It really isn't. Emma Bentley says she misses us and she wishes she was here. What's up, Jeb McCullough? Gonna bounce a driver as well. Well, Emma, we wish you were out here too. Uh, the whole Bentley family is just some of the nicest people you'll ever meet. Oh, I was chatting with Pepper for a good while before the driver's meeting. Just getting caught up. Good family. They are, they are incredibly people. We got about four or five side by side sitting over here, sitting behind the trailer. Just, I think they're watching the course and watching the finish line. Look at Daniel flying through this course. Get okay, Daniel, one of the guys that upgraded to that Can Am. Ooh, six two point nine four five. Let's see, not enough to edge out Adam. Adam had a six two point zero. Wow. Daniel now with a six two point nine. So that's a fourth place spot currently. Coy Chapel currently in the lead with a sixty. And I I believe that Dylan Dowler might wrap up we round got, one for our. Oh no, uh, we've we got. got uh, we had a couple late entries. That's right. They're going at the end today. Which I think will be, in uh, again, Dylan Dower having a great run here, but I think going later in the day is going to have a good payout. This course is not going to change much. I think those rock ledges are going to smooth out. Uh, a lot of the dirt ledges with rocks in them are going to smooth out a little bit. I don't think you're going to see any big ruts here. Uh, again, uh, you're going to see things kind of sp- – the, the whole course will uh, Where are you p- going, Dylan? potentially uh, get a little faster as the day goes on. That the groove will kind of get worn in, so you can kind of pitch it in those corners a little bit harder. So I think we got, uh, I've got three more to go, and I, again, I think going later in the day is going to pay off for them. Dylan Dowler, like I mentioned earlier, tied in points right now with Bray- Braden Upchurch for that third and fourth position with 164 points. And that's a 63.031 for Dylan. Dylan's been doing great in the uh, cup class yeah. as well this season. Getting hard to tell his rig. It's just so hard to just tell <laughs> just that neon orange. Well, it's only if you're blind, Matt. It really, it's like it's so bright. <laughs> it's so bright. All right, looks like Cody. <laughs> Cody Kaysen with uh, a new wrap or some some new decals or something there on the side of the buggy. And just coming out screaming. (laughs) 
thanks to his brother Clay, Cody came out on top at Wildcat a couple weeks ago, even though he wasn't there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was at his senior prom, but he had a, a great stunt double, his brother Clay filling in for him, able to get him those points for the season. Cody is second in points right now coming into this weekend for the stock class with 190 points right behind Brandon Davis. Woo, 57.219. Cody just smoked this course and laid down the fastest time so far. Wow, absolutely flying. Again, when he broke that 60 mark, that's... That's pretty incredible. Now, we still have two very competitive drivers left to go to wrap up round one for us. Josh Kropinski on the line now. Again, that, that neon uh, neon pink hanging out the bottom always, always gives you a good tail. Going to be hard to beat, that 57. That was flying. But Josh is out on the course right now. We also have Cooper Bentley on the line after him. With a new wrap as well. Let's see if any of these guys can shake things up. What's up, Bub Meadows? Mr. Addictive Photography tuning in. He's our official photographer for the National Rock Racing Association this season. Nick Campbell, his brother John Campbell will be racing later on uh, with us tomorrow. Uh, Nick was Snapchatting me. Uh, he had a, a chipped tooth in his rear end, so he was uh, going to replace the ring of pinion in the old Taz buggy. So. <laughs> Again, Josh, oh, Josh took the yeah. – uh, he went for the no send there. Yes. He went for the trying to keep the rig together yeah. send. Yeah. Sometimes you got to make that call. 76.074 for Mr. Josh Kapinski. And again, our last, I believe our last stock driver coming through here will be Cooper Bentley in, in a new wrap. All right, we're going to watch a quick video before Cooper takes off. <sighs> If you look closely, you'll notice some familiar names there on yes. that tombstone. Brandon, Braden, Daniel, Cody, Dylan, Dan. It's getting a little too far away. Now I can't yeah. see. Uh, but those are all the names of the, our top drivers in the in the stock class. Apparently, Cooper is coming for them yes. in the Grim Reaper. Which kind of reminded me of the old uh, Grave Digger. He had, like, the different, different off-road buggies on. That's what I said. It looked like Grave Digger. All right, this is Cooper Bentley wrapping up round one for the Rock Life Off-Road UTV Stock Class. We don't usually see Cooper racing in the stock class. No. But he is actually racing, I believe, for Scotty Harden's points. Yeah. He, uh, this he's, weekend. Uh, kind of became famous racing a side-by-side, -side, upgraded to a big bouncer. and He still races side-by-sides in the Cup Series class with us. And does very, very well. There's times that he's like, yeah, I'm going to race this weekend. Comes out, wins it, and then does very well in the voucher class as well. He's a machine. He, he really is. He And, again, one of the kindest racers I think we have out here as well. Definitely he's having fun today kid. racing that, uh, that stock UTV class. Oh, still sending it over the jump. Whoa. Air to nice. 61.928. Wow. Cooper Bentley. Uh, I do believe he was running for Scotty's yes. points. Yeah, he said he's also on the, on, on the sides. He's going to cross their names out as he beats them. So <laughs> I uh, think he may be to cross a few of those names out today. All right, guys. We are going to take a quick commercial break. And when we come back, I'll give you that top five rundown. And we're going to go to the VIN class. Rebirth from the depths of Baja. Mickey Thompson Tires announces a new American mud terrain legend. 
the new Baja Legend MTZ, silica reinforced T4 tread compound, power ply three ply construction, improved four pitch side biters, proven MTZ tread styling for undisputed traction. 35 different sizes, and one is just waiting for your rig. The Baja Legend MTZ. We are back. Again, Vin class sitting off the line. Do you want to give us that top three real quick? Let's do I'm going to do better, and I'll give you top five. Perfect. From round one for the Rock Life Off-Road UTV stock class. Cody Kaysen took the top spot with a 57-second wow. run, and then we had Coy Chapel with a 60.8, Brandon Davis with a 61.1, Cooper Bentley with a 61.9, and then we had Adam Coots with a 62. Those are your top five from round one. We are ready to move into our VIN class now. I see Don Curtis on the line. Again, Cooper Bentley I hear Don Curtis coming in on the line. fourth. That's absolutely incredible. Like, hey, I want to race this thing. Let's do this. Coming I mean, in fourth. I'm not surprised. Like, it's just absolutely incredible to see him just be like, I'll hop in the side by side, go take fourth overall for the for the first course. Again, Don Curtis. Again, we were talking. Talking this morning about his uh, motor upgrades he's doing this off season again has uh, upgraded get him a little more power a little more reliability again that uh, big body Chevy just roaring through the hills with a, a big block you know that 454 is kind of hard to mistake how many of these trucks do you think exist that are out climbing hills <laughs> like these here that we have in Arkansas yeah I would say only one that I know of. <laughs> It's living its best life. It really is. This it is, really is this is every truck's best life. Yeah, it really there. is. It, like I get I get plenty of airtime each week. People cheer me on until it hits a tree. But you know what? Yeah, That's, he he did hit a tree. He can replace parts. He can. Yeah, he he smoked that tree too, and it was not a tiny tree. It was like a big tree. Like to crumple a three, you know, an in, a quarter inch fender is just you know pretty impressive. Yeah. That's why he's got that aluminum uh, cut grill in the front now. They had uh, <laughs> had, uh, had to make some modified some body panels, you know, after uh, a very quick heat. And it was a crazy part was it was right after the after the exit. Went to the finish line, was darting to the right, and just That's barely right. caught it. And I've just done that before. Right at the end, you get a little excited. Yeah, yeah. You're just trying to get out the yep. top. My yeah. dad always likes to say, like when we're trail riding, but which it just ends up with us driving as fast <laughs> as we can through the <laughs> through the woods. He's like, "Don't hit the trees. The trees don't move." Yeah, they don't. Like, you they don't really want to hit the trees. <laughs> they don't. They do not move at all. I remember like hitting, a, taking my four one time, hitting a tree, and like, like I kind of hit it with a four, and then I kind of flip, hit the tree. They do not give it all. Nope. Whoa! Whoa! Splashing through the finish line. Nine six point five four one for Mr. Don Curtis and Curtis Racing. They have some new merch coming out too, as well. I heard. Oh uh, yeah. I was talking to Mrs. Curtis this morning, and she oh. said we got some new merch that'll be coming out soon. We'll have to check it out. Justin Hoback in the WT on the line now. Yo, WT. His little boy, little four-year-old collier, calls it the super fast truck. Yeah, I, I, yeah, that's, I like that's that. That's what he calls super it. Super fast truck. He said, are we taking the super fast truck down there? Yeah. So said, which, which one's the super fast truck? Yeah. He said <laughs> the WT. Like, yeah, yeah, man. It's yeah, pretty that, fast. That makes sense. Yeah. I mean, it is a race truck. I mean, I feel like that's an appropriate name, right? We got Tiffany Porter checking in. What's up, Tiffany? Craig Zollner. Guess you're going to have to figure out how to afford a full body. Better start buying those lotto tickets. Something. Come join the the stock class fun. Craig, will we see you out here tomorrow? Vince Lowe's checking in from the elementary school pickup line again. <laughs> I love that. That is awesome. That seems like the perfect time to be. That is like got to be the coolest place to check you in know, from. You know, you got a little time to kill sitting in the line. Yeah. 
Good time to watch some racing. David's watching from work. Yeah, that's got to be one of the cool the, the the child pickup line at elementary school has to be one of the coolest places to watch rock bouncing action. There's a lot of time to be killed waiting in the school oh, pickup yeah, lines. Yeah. Oh, Craig, he says no, he still broke. That's right. You had a, you had a rough weekend at Wildcat, didn't you? Yeah. We saw some really weird accidents at Wildcat. We did. Wildcat was oddly rough on Again, as far as a medium duty course, we had talked about that in Lifey quite a bit. That it was more of a medium duty course, not say one of our extreme courses we normally race at. Whoa, Justin <laughs> launching out there in the WT, uh, just having fun with it. One one five point eight five nine for Justin Hoback. Yeah, Wildcat definitely had its share of carnage, thrills and spills. A lot of them rather unexpected for everybody, I think. <laughs> yeah. Well, Craig, hopefully you'll be able to get the buggy back together and join us uh, in Rush, Kentucky, May 3rd and 4th. Guys, that'll be our next event. And this is Charles Chris out on the course now. Charles is sitting first in points coming into this weekend for the Venn class with 198 points. And then we've got Don Curtis with 187 and Justin Hoback with 170. Ken Charles Chris has definitely done a lot of work with this Toyota or his uh, Jeep in the offseason. Every year he makes some more upgrades. Started out as kind of just a recreational trail rig and uh, definitely made a lot of modifications to it, making it safer and a little bit faster each time. He, uh, Charles Christ is owner of High Octane Films, so a lot of times you can see some of his film stuff that he does on uh, YouTube. Check him out on YouTube or Facebook. We appreciate all he does for the sport and all the great coverage he gives us. I was talking to us this morning. He did, an, he did a... Uh, Charles did an overlay of Timmy's time, Timmy's run with a GoPro next to Nick Reich's run, and they're almost exactly side by side. You put them on top and bottom, and you can watch them almost simultaneously. In the bottom, there's a overlay. You can see the speed, and it's really neat just to see how close their runs really are. It's it's, it's just incredible. So, uh, again, some of the film footage stuff they're doing now is really, really fascinating. So Charles does a great job of that. Getting splashed in through those puddles. Okay, there we go. Absolutely sending it through the finish line. Wow. 103.863 for Mr. Charles I think he Chris. went through every gear that thing had Jeez. in the last 100 yeah, I, yards. Yeah, wow. <laughs> All right, we're going to cut to commercial. We'll come back to the Austin Racing action right after these messages. Don Curtis had the fastest time for round one of the Venn class with a 96, and then Charles Caris with a 103, and Justin Hoback with a 115. Again, you can see all of our uh, our uh, UTV Cup Series guys pulling next to us. We got uh, 
Uh, several of them pulling around that are racing dual classes. Again, we know we have a ton of drivers who will do both of them. we got D.C. Thompson sitting in the race line starting gate with right behind him Adam Koontz, who will be racing both our Cup Series and the stock class today. D.C. has uh, pretty much made this rig famous by being on the podium quite a bit. He built it a few years ago, unveiled it at Wildcat, I think, two years ago. And then the chassis he sold is also racing with us in this, in this series as well doesn't necessarily race all the races, but it does race in this series with us as well, so uh, kind of exciting to see. Again, DC, we used to say, is our kind of our, our, our in-house wild man, but he actually tamed it down a little bit last year and ended up on the podium a bunch. Uh, again, I think he used to be just almost a little too sinned uh, and would end up breaking, so he's tamed it down a little bit last year. And when he, luckily, he has learned the power of yeah. the moderate sense. Yes, yes. Instead of always, always full the full sense. Yes, yes. And uh, luckily for him, he put it on it's the podium. It's a fine line. It's yeah. a real fine line. It really is. It is. <laughs> it's <laughs> not you're, always easy to know which one to use. <laughs> it's true, and that's what I was going to say. When you're in the cab, it's a much different experience to try to back it off to that medium sin instead of going full sin. So it's a lot harder when you're in the driver's seat and the motor's there and you, you're racing through things and you're. You're seeing uh, flags whipping past you, and there's uh, tape everywhere, and, you know, it's uh, very interesting things to be in happen. that driver's seat. Is Yeah, things happen. Things can happen. And so uh, he was able to tang it back a little bit last year and put it on the podium quite a, quite regularly, so awesome to see. Zach's out there coaching him up a little bit. Oh, boy. Zach is our uh, in-house announcer that uh, is uh, kind of wild as well. Zach's keeping all of our spectators entertained out here today. <laughs> D.C. Thompson on the course, our first driver of the Super Grip UTV Cup class, round one. Again, you can see some of these guys are just absolutely pushing as fast as they possibly can down this downhill section, just thrashing as they're coming through there. Tiffany, I glanced at Jack's shirt earlier but couldn't quite see it well enough. But now I'm curious, and I'll, I'll have to look over there in a second. I can't see him right now. Uh-oh, what's DC doing? Got to get straight there. Again, the hills are always steeper in person than they look on camera. Yes. You don't want to be rolling into those things a little sideways. <laughs> you really don't. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Did DC get lost? He did. <laughs> he missed the driver's meeting. He was pre-running out here, and I believe he broke something and was hustling to get fixed again. Um, so it's quite possible that DC is a little confused about I have no where he's supposed to go right now. I have no doubt that they will get him straightened out very quickly. Clyde sends out maps of the courses for each class to all of the drivers um, the day or two before the race after he gets them all lined out and taped out on the hills. And so then those drivers have the chance to do their homework and study the course both on paper or, on, or rather on screen uh, and then also to come and look at them and walk the course I was trying to look and at maybe it. do some pre-running when they get here. I was trying to look at the back axle, see if there's something, see if there's something that was broken or. But he is clear of course now. All right, that means we've got Joe Merritt on the line. This is his first ever race. He said he's been, uh, just got the buggy built. And I guess he thought this looked like a fun time to come on out here. Oh, Glad to have yeah. him racing with us this weekend for the first time.
you know, it's not an easy thing. It's very intimidating to come out. It um, absolutely is. E- even if you've been racing before. Um, but especially if it's your first race and you kind of feel like everybody else knows the drill already. And, um, you know, you're trying to figure out the driver's meeting and the staging. And, yes. And all those things that, you know, it takes a lot going on behind the scenes when you're here at an event, whether you're being part of it or you're spectating or whatever. So um, we always love having some new folks come join us, though, and uh, get a little taste of the action themselves. If you think that you might like to come on out and race with us, you can go to nationalrockracing.com. You can find our uh, calendar of events for the rest of the season, and you can also find the safety requirements and what you need to know um, about each class on there as well. We're hearing that he went the wrong way on the radio. You know, I'm sure he was probably hoping to be able to watch yes. DC <laughs> and see which yes. way DC went, and uh, that obviously didn't didn't work out for him this time. But you know, new chassis, getting out here to get a, get a little seat time in it. Definitely feeling good. Definitely an awesome time to come out get some get some experience again. Tim Cameron. Uh, famously said there's no seat time like race seat time. So coming out, just get some seat time in the buggy, feeling it out, you know, getting some of those uh, new car blues out of the way. So definitely getting some uh, good time in today. And you know what? I wouldn't feel bad about getting lost on a course out no. here like this either. We um, we make use of the entire hillside we for do. all six classes, two courses and six classes. So there's 12 runs happening on this hill in a race weekend. And we're, uh, I say we, Clyde, Clyde's the mastermind. Yes. He's utilizing every bit of the hill to make all those courses. So there's a lot of, a lot of turns, a lot of ups and downs you need to keep track of. Adam Coons taking off the line there in that shake and bake buggy we talked a little bit about during our UTV stock class. Again, running a Can-Am race car. Adam had some tough luck on our uh, Wildcat race. A little bit of breakage, but looks like he got it repaired, and I'll do some more racing with us this weekend. Again, making quick work of that downhill section. Again, you can see a lot of those guys really pushing that downhill section. Again, kind of thrashing through those stair steps are coming down. More dirt ledges. They're not really there's some rock in them, but again, a lot more dirt in there with the trees. Jumping that double jump, clearing that tabletop, and through the finish line. 73.221 for Mr. Adam Kuntz, and that was our very first finisher of the UTV Cup Series today. For those of you just tuning in, this is the third race of the National Rock Racing Association, presented by Mickey Thompson Tires, and this race is brought to you by Spider Off-Road. We're out here at Hot Springs, Arkansas, and again, the weather is absolutely beautiful. We have a whole hill full of spectators. All right, Tim Cameron on the tour. Timmy is second in points currently in the Super Grip UTV Cup class coming into this weekend. He is six points behind. Dylan Dowler is in the lead with 187 points. Wow. Timmy behind him with 181. Now, so we talk about guys walking the course and getting lost. Timmy being one of those guys that painstakingly walks the course days and days before Clyde even gets here. I so, don't think I've ever seen Timmy get lost. Yeah. I say he, he's, he uh, walks the course usually as Clyde's marking it. <laughs> <laughs> Making notes, checking weather, checking the barometric pressure that day, you know. Hey, you don't become the goat for nothing. You really don't. I can watch that one <laughs> sp- splash. He's getting a little car wash out there. And that tabletop jump and through the finish line. Six 
Wow. For Tim Cameron. That is the time to beat right now, but we're just a handful of drivers in to our Super Grip UTD Cup class. Round one. Looks like we've got Cooper Bentley pulling up to the line now. Cooper Bentley is fifth in points coming into this weekend in the cup class. He's just a little bit of a renaissance man this he weekend. Really, he really is. <laughs> you can see Jack jumping right behind that race line starting gate as soon as they take off. Trying to not get sprayed with trying to not get sprayed with rocks, but again, Cooper Bentley, Mr. Hard Charge and coming straight out the gate. What do you want to bet Cooper's going to be a late entry to bounty class tomorrow? <laughs> you know what? It, if both rigs hold together, I say yes. I feel like that's how it always goes. We always yeah. have like four of these guys <laughs> that kind of wait and see how Friday yeah. goes. And then they enter late entries as uh, for bounty class. Yeah. Cooper I, is ripping through the course right now. We will, of course, see Cooper back tomorrow in the bouncer class. Either way, whether whether he's back in bounty or yeah. not, he's second in points right now in the bouncer class wow. coming into this weekend. That's incredible. As we've seen some weird, weird things happen in the bouncer class so far this season. So I'm excited to see what's going to change out. Whoa. Six zero point five seven seven. That, that is your new, your new leader. leader. Wow. <laughs> Nicely done, <laughs> Cooper Bentley. He smiled and gave me the one finger up and he got a, got a, made a like, smile. Um, I would be smiling, too, if I was Cooper right now. So he just pushed Kim, Tim Cameron with a 61 down to second place currently. But we're only a handful of drivers in. We've still got a lot to go here for our Super Grip UTV Cup Class Round 1. And we've got Cody Kaysen on the line. Again, speaking of the Kaysens. They are our featured driver Friday. That's right. I don't know if you guys noticed Matt and I's shirts today. We've got CNC Racing that we are representing. Featured driver Friday is our way of giving a little recognition back to our drivers on our Friday races. We uh, started this at the very end of last season, so uh, we pick a driver to represent on Fridays. And, uh, you know, we just want to, it's just our way to kind of give them a little extra recognition. Um, our, a lot of the drivers are awesome and, and give us some of their merch they share with us to, you know, be able to wear. So this is our way of just showing that little bit of recognition back to yeah. these guys. So CNC Racing, Feature Driver Friday today. We'll see yeah. if we can get them up here. I know I know we can get Clay to come talk with us. Oh, I don't yeah. know about Cody, though. It would be better to have both at the same time. That would be a great, great we'll, interview. We'll see. We might have to bribe them somehow. I don't know. Give them some snacky snacks. I don't, will he, I don't know. I don't know if the snacks will work, Matt. It's weird, but it doesn't work on some people. Yeah. <laughs> Six five point five oh six for Cody Kaysen. and somehow we've got uh, we got Clay on the line here, right behind Cody now too. Again, speaking of that CNC racing, we yeah, have yeah. How'd they manage that? They do the Kaysen brothers racing back to back here, and again, uh, as Bree said. She had a wonderful idea of showing some. We, ha we have so many drivers merch. It just makes uh, makes for a good time for, uh, you know. Yeah, you we want to try and represent and give everybody that little bit of recognition on our Fridays. So we love repping our drivers. A lot of them have some very cool merch. They do. We've got some, some really fun color schemes and creative they really do. Uh, designs and everything. So. Clay is flying through here. Clay is fourth in points currently coming into this weekend in the cup class with 170 points behind Casey, Timmy, and Dylan. 
and he uh, was on the second place podium at Wildcat a couple weeks ago for round two. Clay was also our 2023 UTV Cup season champ. Oh, skeet through that finish line. Five <laughs> seven point eight five two eight for Mister eight four two for Mister Clay Kaysen and four hundred one k. That is your wow. new leader. That <laughs> absolutely flying through there. That was a heck of a time. Fifty seven from Clay Kaysen, pushing Cooper Bentley with a sixty and Tim Cameron with a sixty one to those second and third spots now. Man, I see these guys are really pushing Timmy to the max there. Again, depth bumping Timmy all the way down to the third. There you know, Timmy Timmy is a um, pretty undisputed champion in the bouncer class, but in the UTV class, there these guys are very, very much stepping up yes. to uh, the line and giving him some very stiff competition now. As we saw, I mean, Clay was our season champ last year yeah. for the cup class. Um, so they're keeping it tight, keeping it competitive out here. You guys think, to our audience that's watching at home, do you think we're going to see anybody being able to step up in the bouncer class and provide that level, that tightness of competition to Timmy? I don't know. That's Timmy's in the lead by 26 points in the bouncer that's class. A lot. Now we're only on round three, so that's for two races so far coming into this weekend. But that 26 points is a lot, considering a lot. going into finals last year, going into the last race of the season. There was only eight points that separated second, third, and fourth. All right, Casey Howell on the board. Casey Howell, speaking of points, third in points coming into this weekend for the cup class. He's got 172 behind Timmy and Dylan. Casey was also on that third place podium at Wildcat two weeks ago. Been flying downhill, trying to corner literally as fast as he can. Turn around and make whip it and try to shoot up that hill. Again, Casey is absolutely on a tear right now. See if he can't keep that smooth run going. The time to beat is the smoking fast 57.8 from Clay Kaysen right now. That's going to be a quick run. See how he did. 62.325 for Casey Howell. A great run. Not enough to get him in that top three spot. That looks like a, a fourth place spot right now. But still a great run from Casey. I see Austin Tidwell on the line now. As the drivers are pulling past us, I'm getting to tell them what place they're on. Some are like, yeah. I told Casey Fourth. He's like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, unless you're holding up that one yeah. or maybe two spot. Yeah. <laughs> if, you're on, if you're throwing one, two, or three, I think they're okay with it. Yeah. But if that, anything past the podium, you're like, man, come on. I don't know. With this crowd, this level of competition out here, I'd be okay with a yeah. fourth place finish. If you're in the top five, you're still getting it. All right, I think we're getting some guys jockeying around down here. We got Austin Tidwell getting a kick off the line. Let's see. Uh, my my question to the online spectators about somebody stepping up, you know, against Timmy in the bouncer class. Craig Zollner says that Cooper can do it. But Meadow says nobody can. Timmy's on another level in the bouncer. He really is. Like, Again, I would never say this too in front of Timmy, but he really is. Like, the guy's kind of a legend, you know? I mean, the way he can read a course and the way he just absolutely adapts to the buggy is just able to push it so hard. I, I mean, Timmy really is just that that guy, you know? I mean, he really, really is. Again, being able to push the buggy that hard and consistently. I mean, there's guys that have beat Timmy. Right. I've seen Danny Smith. I've seen um, Bubba Bacon. 
Uh, there's been a uh, Wade Good. I've seen guys beat Timmy on a given course or even a given day. But when you put them overall for the season, I mean, winning eight in a row, that I think that kind of tells you everything right, you it's know. It's the consistency that matters. Oh, got hung up here a little bit. Well, the season is still uh, fairly new. We're only three races in this we really weekend. Are. So we got a lot still to see what happens and how things shake out. Where did Alston? He's hiding there behind the trees. What are we doing, Alston? Come on out. There we go. Alston raced in the stock class with us just a little while ago as well. Yeah, when you're racing those multiple classes, things get really good. You have, wait, we went up this one, but now we're going down it, or exactly. vice versa, you know. It's a lot to keep track of. One oh nine point four three two. I believe we've got Brandon Davis on the line. Matt Myrick was our number 13. He must have elected to go at the end. Brandon making that 10 a.m. famous. Absolutely just thrashed on it for multiple classes. I think this is his, his fourth season racing it. Maybe. Again, those parts Third are. Third or fourth. And he also included, when he was talking about doing the, the chassis swap, he said every single part I had went from the old chassis to the new chassis other than the chassis itself. He said, now, there was a few things. There was, like, I think one or two ball joints he might have replaced just where they were worn out. He had changed out. But he said pretty much all the parts from the old chassis came to the new one. So he said it kind of shows the durability of the manufacturers that are making these parts. They're That's just true. so incredible. He actually won a skinny pedal award the year before last here at Hot Springs um, by cartwheeling the yeah. <laughs> toward yeah. the finish line. And he definitely had a pretty wild ride last weekend. Again, kind of cartwheeling down that hill, catching a bouncer. tree. And yeah. Saw him pull over with two flat tires. Just absolutely just kind of a wild, wild ride in the menace buggy. Sixty-nine point five one four for Mr. Brandon Davis. All right, we've got Martin Stewart filling in for Austin Connell. Yes, yes. So this is normally Austin Connell's spot. But we have a stunt driver filling in, which we've seen. Uh, I was talking to Mr. Stewart this morning, <laughs> and he said, I've raced for so many people that my own spot is like falling all the way back second to last, even though I've raced every single I think race. He's only raced once for himself. I was like, Are you just the go to guy <laughs> when someone needs a backup driver? I don't know how many he's filled in for. Yeah, he really is. He raced for Cody at yeah. Wildcat. He really has been a, a great backup driver this season. Like, you know, if you have a side by side spot, just give him a call, you know. And, again, that's iconic Bat Cave Customs right-hand drive. And I like those sidebars, the kind of reminiscent of his dad's uh, rig. So how those they kind of pivot down, those iconic uh, sidebars. Very cool looking. Here we go. So if, um, if this UTV... Buggy was kind of kind of fashioned after Gone Postal, the right-hand drive rock bouncer of his dad's. Was Does that mean we need to call it like I don't know, like posting? Delivered. Yeah, posted. delivered, <laughs> delivered. <laughs> yeah. You've got mail. <laughs> yes, you've got mail. Yes, all of those are appropriate, Bree. 
Again, Martin, heck of a racer. Delivery fee. Delivery fee. Yeah. I was like, Martin, heck of a racer. Again, his dad was heck of a racer. What do you guys think? I don't know if he has a name for it or not, but we yeah. can we could still make one up for fun. We we should, yeah. You could tell Martin from the crowd. Usually he's the tallest guy in there, and he's usually laughing at someone's joke. He or, is pretty much the tallest yeah. one. He'll be like the tallest guy there, and he's usually laughing at something. He's uh, very good friends you'll with several no, of the You'll UV. notice that his buggy has got like a nice long uh, kind of, you know, shape to yeah. it. He's what, 6'5 or something? Yeah, to be he's able to fit in there. He's he's taller than me. So definitely uh, a definitely uh, tall guy. He's usually again have a good time with some of our younger UTV drivers. Woohoo. 7 8 Craig said late delivery. <laughs> yeah, late delivery. It's true. I don't know if Martin would appreciate yeah. that one. Yeah. Out, out for delivery. Haul and mail. Haul and mail. Have we had Have we had any? Have we've had some haul and yeah. other things. Yeah. <laughs> yes, we have. Yes. Haul and mail. Yeah. I see Madison King. Looks like she's getting ready to pull in the starting gate. Oh, Scotty's right. He calls it straight ignorant. He does. He does. We he does. Straight ignorant, a.k.a. Yes. Hall and mail. <laughs> yeah, a.k.a. Hall and mail. <laughs> I see Madison pulling the starting, the race line starting gate, and her dad's running over there. But Nathan is over there working. He pulled over and pulled the panel off and is now is working on the side of the buggy. Oh, boy. Not sure what's going on there. Hey, Scotty, uh, did Cooper was Cooper running for you in the stock class? Just to confirm, I thought that's what I heard. But since you're on here, you, yeah. can, you can just go yeah. ahead and tell us. <coughs> we have just a couple of drivers left. We are on round one of the Super Grip UTV Cup class. And uh, Nate back there putting his panels back on. They had took the panel off or messed with something. I'm not sure what was going on there. Looks like whatever it was, they got it fixed. Look, looks like we just had Nathan, Madison, and Dylan. And then I believe Matt, Matt Myrick. Yeah, Matt, Matt was number 13, so he will be going at the very end. All right. Yes, Scotty said yes. Cooper was okay. running for him. That's kind of handy. You tuned in. It's really like, hey, sir. Hey, who's yeah. for you? Hey, well, <laughs> Cooper did a good job for you. <laughs> like, it's really easy to uh, just get information from the horse's mouth there. And since they tune in the live feed, we appreciate all of our viewers on the live feed, especially one that can answer questions hey, for us. Straight from the source when is always we, uh, best. When we need to know answers, they're actually tuning in. So that, that helps. That's why we tell everybody to come to the Rock Racing TV page, yes. not the other five pages you can where i'm gonna turn all those off in there, the future. there's like 40 different I'm gonna places i'm gonna make it so you guys don't have a choice yeah there's like 40 different places they can watch this show from bunch of little rebels yeah yeah there's uh, i'm gonna make taylor turn it off there's several drivers pages <laughs> you can I'm watch from <laughs> Some, sometimes we're sending it to speed sport uh we have uh the rock racing page rock racing pages we send it to as well as again we have several different social media platforms we're pushing it out on Yeah, we, we sent it to quite a few places. Madison King coming to the finish here. Seven eight point one eight one for Miss Madison King. Our fastest time is still Clay Kaysen wow. with a fifty seven. He was flying. And then Cooper with a sixty and Timmy with a sixty one, but We've got Dylan Dowler on the line right now. Dylan took home the win at Wildcat a couple weeks ago. And he's also first in points coming into this weekend. And if you haven't seen his buggy in person, it is probably the brightest orange I have ever seen in my life. All right, let's see if he can knock Clay out of that top spot or not. It's not going to be easy. It will not. I don't not. think Clay left much time to he spare. Really Again, they, they're absolutely ripping on the downhill section of these. Oh, oh man, there Dang it goes. It. 
Uh oh. Is the belt slipping or what's going on? It's. He it's, did go through a lot of water. Okay, I'll say it, it was still moving, so I know the belt's still connected. A lot of times, if they stop moving here, it start revving up like that, and they can roll backward. I would say broke a belt, but again, splashing through that water, you could get water on any kind of electrical connectors or. Uh, oh man! Again, cause all kinds of problems. I've seen guys splash a bunch of mud or water up on top of an air filter and cause issues. Well, he's got Cody over there. Help him out. Yeah. So. And Cody could tell you probably exactly what's wrong with it if something's wrong. He must have said, send it. Yeah, yeah. he's like, you're fine. Oh, wow. Riding a wheelie there. Dylan definitely still wants to keep collecting those points oh, yeah. since he's, you know, com first coming into the weekend. Um He's had a great couple rounds of the season so far already. So let's hope he can at least get two solid finishes today. There's always round two also. Yeah. Things don't go quite your way yeah. around one. You really never know how it's going to shake out for the day. One one nine point zero two three. Again, coming with orange buggies. Mr. Nathan King is sitting right behind it. His sister ran earlier. All right, we've got Nathan on the line. And then we'll have uh, Matt Myrick wrapping things up for round one. Ooh, wow. That is going to be an absolute smoke in time. Matt, what is Nathan getting out there? Squirrely. Uh, he, he, <laughs> he really is. That is Watching him skip down a hill sideways, I think, is like the definition of squirrely. If you're going sideways, and you better be going fast enough yeah. to <laughs> stay ahead yeah. of your rear I feel like end. Danny Smith was one of the guys I think that did that the best. He was the only guy that would be on a hill sideways and just would just – not lift, and he'd be either making it up that the hill. It's or about all you can do at that point. I've seen him whip a U-turn and come down a hill just as fast as he went up the hill. He comes down, whip a U-turn, and try it a second time. So get it, able to keep it flat, keep it straight, keep it going forward. That's a good run from Nathan. What? Six six. What? Point six six six. What? Clyde brought it over and showed us the timer. Literally <laughs> six six point six six six. Since when is six is wow. anybody's lucky number? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for real. Sixty six point six 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 for Mr. Nathan King. Well, that's just weird. That is. I weird. don't think we've ever had that happen. I don't before. think we have. We have had some cool times. Yeah. Yeah. I still remember when Danny got seventeen point seventy six in the yeah. Liberty Liberty buggy. Yep. Seventeen seventy six. Ha, there you go. You guys that was that out. super cool. I, I, that I, one was and, a good one. And Zach was announcing that too. I thought that was super neat. You know. All right, Matt Myrick is going to wrap up round one for the Super Grip UTV Cup class. Matt has had a little bit of a, of a rough yeah. um, re-entry re into yeah. racing. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, that's just how it goes sometimes. You got to shake out the bugs yeah. in the buggy. Dust off your driving skills. I think we've all been there before. When you, anytime you take a little bit of a break, yeah. or even if you just have, you know, a new vehicle or have changed some stuff around, you got to get used to again. Yeah. So again, he, I he, thought this was his old chassis. He used to race with us. He actually sold that and had bought this recently and had done some stuff with it. And uh, and uh, so it, this is a new chassis to him. Uh, he's racing now again. Like I said, I thought it was his old chassis, and we were chatting the other day. He said, "No, I sold that one and I had uh, bought this one." So. Even though it's the same paint scheme. I was going to say, it's tricky because the yes, the paint he scheme keeps is, his yes. uh, color scheme all the same. Yeah. But uh, Matt Marek from Busted Knuckle Films, for those of you who watch a lot of YouTube videos and on Facebook, Busted Knuckle does a ton for the off-road community. So. Still remember the first time I heard of Busted Knuckle. 
Probably in like 2011 or something. Yeah. Whoa. 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 Where are you going, buddy? Seven zero point two four five. That was a seven zero point two four five. We are going to run to a short commercial. And then when we come back, I'll give you guys that top five rundown from round one of the cup class. And then uh, and then we'll wrap things up and be back after a short intermission. Yep. But you guys hang on just a second. I'll give you that rundown right after this. The Mickey Thompson Premium Mud Terrain is on the road and full of undisputed attitude. The Baja Boss MT. No compromises, ever. We are purpose-built tires for truck and Jeep enthusiasts everywhere. All mud tires are not created equal. And here's the proof. Powerfly XD construction, asymmetrical tread design, extreme side biters, and more. Find your tire size today at MickeyThompsonTires.com. All right, we are back. We're going to get the rundown of that UTV Cup Series. Well, Matt was distracting me, and I only got to top three so far. <laughs> Bree is doing all, all She is doing all the maths as fast as she can. <laughs> who's top five? Yeah. I mean, who's number five? I was laughing because they were, they, were <laughs> they were calling one of our cameramen, which was Gary, and she said, Gary is eating a Slim Jim. What do you it, want? I got it. I, I got it. <laughs> and it was, it was very, very comical. Okay, yeah, that's what I had. You're too late. I already did. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Clay Kaysen took the top spot with a 57.8, followed by Cooper Bentley with a 60.5, Tim Cameron with a 61.8, Casey Howell with a 62.3, and Cody Kaysen with a 65.5. That does wrap up our first half of racing for the day. We're going to take a 30-minute break. We'll be back live at 2.30. So you guys... Central Standard Time. Yeah, that's right. We're on Central Time, so go... Grab a quick drink, a little snack, I don't know, something. But don't go too far because we'll be back shortly with uh, more racing action. See you guys then. <laughs> 